This is Vivica Williams, and you're watching Head to Head. As of today, eight NATO trust funds are working to support Ukraine in developing its armed forces. And in the nearest future, one more fund may be set up. The Cabinet of Ministers is to sign a new agreement, one on the mining. To talk more about this in, in general, we're joined in the studio today by Vitaly Martinuk. He's the head of international programs at the Center for Global Studies, Strategy 21. Hello, and thank you for joining us, Vitaly. No. So before we talk about this new trust fund, let's talk a little bit about the other eight that have been set up and how they're functioning. Yeah, so, a trust fund, uh, it's a very good idea of NATO, maybe joint idea of NATO and Ukraine, uh, because uh, as Alliance has uh, a budget for its own uh, uh, spendings, uh, to assist Ukraine and to help Ukraine to develop uh, armed forces, other security structures, uh, demands uh, additional uh, financial support from the alliance. So the alliance uh, uh, adopted a decision to uh, set up uh, this trust fund, so-called trust funds. Uh, these trust funds uh, mm, includes different nations uh, of uh, NATO and uh, is headed by a leading nation. Oh. So, one uh, trust fund uh, has leading nation and uh, several nations uh, which uh, contributed to this trust fund. And these so, trust funds are all uh, voluntary and, and they're nationally based, as you're saying, based from one country taking a lead and, and then uh, it's all on a voluntary basis. Yeah, yeah. It is on a voluntary basis uh, because a nation uh, decides uh, how much it can contribute to this uh, uh, trust fund. Uh, uh, so, um, due to this uh, mechanism, the uh, alliance uh, can support Ukraine without additional contributions from the allies. Uh, for example, uh, there are um, different funds uh, on logistic, uh, on medicine, military right. medicine, on uh, cyber security and uh, new one uh, on uh, the mining. Right. Um, for example, on cyber security, it was, uh, it has been very uh, successful uh, trust fund, uh, has been because it is still and uh, it will uh, follow its um, assistance to Ukraine. Uh, Different nations uh, headed by Romania contributed to Ukraine uh, to uh, uh, cyber security structures within the armed forces, the general headquarters, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. And uh, it is very actual for Ukraine and for uh, the alliance as well. Uh, because uh, uh, actual threats, we call them hybrid threats, mm -hmm. includes uh, cyber threats. Which is definitely something yeah. we, we feel, you know, with the NotPetya, with these other types of viruses, it's definitely a very pressing threat. Yeah, 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 of course. And uh, we know these uh, stories on uh, um, that Russia uh, tried to uh, invite electron uh, electional system of the United States of right. America. Uh, the same for Ukraine, as uh, we are moving forward uh, presidential elections in Ukraine next year and uh, the election to the parliament of Ukraine. So, uh, this cyber security is uh, very important for our state. So, we can see with these trust funds, they are dealing with uh, immediate areas that need to be addressed in Ukraine, where we see the development of career officers, the healthcare, all of the other ones you talked about. So they're developed based on specific issues that need to be addressed and giving real-time assistance to that. Um, yeah, the issues to be addressed, uh, they are of a common decision of Ukraine and uh, nations which uh, contribute to this trust fund. So uh, they decide uh, or decided and now decide uh, uh, what issues could be um, a base for projects within this trust fund, one trust fund or several, and uh, um, um, what financial support is necessary to implement these projects 
and uh, what nations can contribute to implement this project, to realize them. Uh, so, this is the way that a trust fund is functioning in Ukraine. And when um, was the first trust fund set up? How long has this project, project or these funds been operating? Um, as for period, uh, uh, it depends on issues. It depends on tasks uh, and uh, problems to be solved. And when was the first one initiated for Ukraine? Um, if I am not mistaken, uh, these trust funds uh, were initiated at the Wells Summit of NATO. And uh, one year after that, uh, it was a period uh, of forming this f the first funds. And after that, they started uh, working. Okay. And so uh, then we shift a little bit and talk about what are the prospects uh, of the funds? Are they helping Ukraine lead more to uh, being able to, to look at membership in the, con in the alliance? Yeah, of course, uh, the trust funds uh, uh, is like a contribution to Ukraine's aspiration to be a, the NATO member state. Uh, and at the same time, but uh, the uh, primary task, I can say, is uh, to assist Ukraine to develop its own security system, security structure, security institutions, uh, to um, make internal defense and security in general reforms uh, in the armed forces, Ministry of Defense, uh, security service of Ukraine and uh, other structures. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, to assist Ukraine uh, to adopt uh, its uh, defense and security system to NATO standards. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the realization of project within trust funds uh, uh, is uh, following by assistance from different nations. Mm -hmm. And representative of these uh, nations um, they um, uh, bring uh, experience of these nations. So we see uh, the trust funds are not just headed by any country, but by ones that, that believe that they can address that issue and have the best uh, knowledge. Yeah. So what countries do we see heading these trust funds and being more invested in Ukraine? The United States of America, Romania, Estonia, uh, Germany as well. Uh, so maybe the key, Lithuania. The Baltic states. Yeah, and yeah the Baltic, uh, the Baltic states. They are key nations uh, to invest to, into Ukraine or to contribute to these trust funds. And so we see, uh, and, and on another hand with that, uh, kind of on a different side, what are we looking at with the demining um, trust fund that's looking at being put. So the, the idea there is to help clear Ukrainian territory of mines of explosives. And Ukraine now is ranked as one of the worst uh, countries when it comes to area and territory that is mined. And it's been said that it could take more than 10 years to demine the country. So this is definitely some new and very important uh, field that a trust fund is needed for. And so what are things that are covered in there and how is it from a NATO perspective in helping with this issue? Um, yeah, you are right. It's very actual for Ukraine, uh, not because only the war on the east of Ukraine, uh, where territory is uh, polluted uh, with uh, different mines, uh, remnants of explosives and so on. But uh, we know these accidents uh, around uh, military storages right. uh, in Kharkiv Oblast and Vinnytsia Oblast. Right, these and huge explosions yeah, yeah. in the last... And the territory years. there uh, is also polluted. And uh, this situation demands um, a new, um, I can say, system, uh, the mining system in Ukraine, or humanitarian the mining, it is called in the world. According, uh, with regard to international standards on the mining, uh, and Ukraine needs a new uh, law on the mining to change uh, our mechanism, because now different uh, agencies, 
the mining agencies of Ukraine are involved in these activities, uh, from the Ministry of Defense, uh, from the Ministry of Interior, mm -hmm. uh, from the Security Service of Ukraine. But there is a need to uh, establish a national center at the national level. They have this consolidation to coordinate, to coordinate. Yeah, mm -hmm. to coordinate uh, these activities of different agencies. And uh, the creation of this center uh, should be written in a new law. Um, there have been different uh, law projects on the mining in, of Ukraine, in Ukraine, but um, by this time, uh, no law has been adopted. So um, this process is underway. So this will be hopefully part of the what the trust fund is helping with is not necessarily uh, with the direct demining, but helping set up those systems to consolidate and even perhaps having some kind of influence on what type of legislation is is necessary. And if and speaking of legislation, uh, if we speak uh, talk a bit about uh, currently President P P Petro Poroshenko was putting forth uh, to create an amendment where in where Ukraine's aspirations to join the join NATO and the EU are outlined in the constitution. So what's the take from NATO and from European allies on this? Um, I, I would like to finish uh, a little bit on the mining uh, because uh, uh, it is not uh, only necessary for Ukraine but uh, for uh, to attract international support including support of the uh, alliance. Uh, because uh, um, this act should allow international organizations to assist Ukraine in the mining uh, on the land. Uh, as for idea of uh, or initiative of Petro Poroshenko to make changes in the Ukrainian constitution and uh, to uh, fix their uh, Ukraine's aspirations uh, to be a member of the EU and NATO. Um, I think that uh, it's, uh, this uh, initiative uh, uh, should uh, show the alliance the, that Ukraine is, um, has very serious uh, aspiration to become, for example, a member of NATO. And uh, uh, we know that uh, it is not so easy to make changes to the uh, constitution because it's necessary uh, to have uh, two thirds of voters in the parliament. So uh, the first challenge is to make these positive changes. And uh, the other, another challenge is to save these changes after the elections mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Uh, because um, according to the idea of uh, the Ukrainian president, that uh, mm, prospects uh, of uh, membership in the EU and NATO uh, should be unchangeable for the coming years. Uh, so um, uh, from other uh, side, uh, it's necessary to um, support uh, the aspirations of Ukrainians. Right. According uh, to different surveys, nowadays uh, around 54, 50, maybe 6 uh, percent of uh, Ukrainians support uh, Ukraine's membership in NATO. So the majority is in favor of this membership. And uh, president, government and parliament, uh, they should uh, show that they um, reflect on this aspiration, not only by speeches, but in legislation, in laws and in constitution as well. And also, uh, even maybe even more importantly, uh, where Ukraine often has the issue is in implementing and demonstrating through actions that this yeah. is necessary. And this is what we see hopefully through the trust funds and through uh, exercises with NATO and alliance countries that is showing Ukraine's development towards that.
Yeah, uh, we should demonstrate that Ukraine is moving towards its membership in NATO by different tracks. Right. Military, internal reforms, legislation and political. So um, only combination of these uh, tracks can uh, bring Ukraine to the final goal of to receive membership in NATO. Thank you so much for being with us today to share this, this insight. Thank you. And this was Vitaly Machanuk. He's the head of the international programs at the Center for Global Studies Strategy 21. Thank you for watching and stay tuned with UATV for more.